Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this tea break repair, I'm going to be trying to fix up this digital multimeter. Robin. Robin is actually a good brand. Don't know if they still exist or not. This I've had for 20 something years. I got this when I worked for Kodak back in the late 1990s. So the reason I want to fix it today is because I need to actually use it. This served me well for 20 years and then when I did my trying to fix videos, I now have proper multimeters. But annoyingly at this moment in time, they're in the Rolls Royce that I'm trying to fix up. So I've got uh, even the fluke one that I fixed on another video is in the Rolls Royce for some reason. So uh, yeah, I need to basically have this working today because I need to do a trying to fix video on something and I need some sort of multimeter to be able to fix it. So I thought no problem, I'll pop batteries in it. Annoyingly, I did leave the batteries in here and it hasn't been used in quite a few years now. And it had gone a little bit blue on this one here. But I've cleaned it up, there's still nothing happening whatsoever and these are new batteries. I can't test the batteries because I haven't got a multimeter to test them. So yeah, it's not going to be the sort of normal videos that I do, but this might be more real life to what you guys might suffer at home because maybe you haven't got the same tools that you see people use on eBay. eBay? What? YouTube, I meant. What I do have, which is, uh, <laughs> it doesn't make sense because of what I just said, I do have a bench power supply here. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to put it to three volts and I'm going to see whether or not we have anything straight onto the terminals. I've got three volts on here now and that will eliminate the batteries. So on these ones here, the middle one here is negative, the outer one is positive. So that means the negative one has to actually be here. I'm doing three volts because they're in series with each other and I'm going to tap that one against here. Now is anything happening? No. So we now know that it's not battery related because even with the bench power supply, three volts, there's nothing happening. Right, let's see if we can take this apart. Now obviously tea break repair, so go get yourself a nice drink. I've got lime cordial, quite tasty. So uh, yeah, relax over the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. Right, I am going to take this apart, but there's no screws anywhere. The only screw was here for the battery compartment. Does this come off? Not sure. Just feeling underneath here. Right, I can feel something here. Yeah, can you see there's a tiny little circular mark just in the dirt just here. I think we have to take off this and that will hopefully uncover some screws. Can't be anything major because when I put this thing away, it did used to work. Robin used to make the BT equipment as well, the BT meters. No, that's like a uh, potentiometer type thing. How is this supposed to come apart? What? Oh, annoying. Right, okay. I thought this was all molded. I thought there was gonna be screws at the front. Ah, here we go. Right, okay, let's uh, stick this back on. Well, actually, no, let's leave that loose in case we need to do something with that. Right, so now we just have little clips. Ah, I think I've got one do this little circlip here. So I don't want this to go walkies. So I'm gonna just try to put my finger over it while I do it. Oh, it did go walkies, but luckily I got it here, hit against my hand. Right, so now this will come out, I'm thinking. Well, maybe not, maybe it will just allow me to take this off now. Yeah. Look at the little cable grip here. To grip onto the cable, stop them yanking out. Right, okay. Why are you not working? Everything looks immaculate. No, it doesn't. Look here. I think it's dirty contacts here. Right, I think that's it. I think this is not turning it on. So it thinks it's permanently off even when you're turning this. So these different fingers will run round here 
and when a certain combination shorts against each other it will turn on. So what we've got one battery going up to this resistor here through here. So this is going to be one pad because you can see here it goes up through a zero ohm resistor zero ohm to here. Yeah. And the other one goes must be through here up to this one here. So if we were to short this and this, I wonder would that turn it on or not? Hmm, maybe. We have a little zebra strip connector up here. All oh, looks very clean and nice. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get a little bit of sandpaper and I'm going to scrape it against these contacts. These two look good. So yeah, battery co corrosion has just worked its way up to here. Right, the sandpaper is also around the car, so I'm really struggling here. I'm going to use a nail file that comes on some nail clippers. Hopefully that will clean them up a bit. In fact, it's going to be this one here, isn't it? Because that's going to correspond to, hold on, will that correspond to one of these? Yeah, I think it's this one, the dirtiest one. You can see a bit of blue here as well. Yeah, they look cleaner than they were. Right, okay, let's uh, pop it back together and see if that fixed it. Actually, while I've got this apart, let me use a little bit of white vinegar on here just to neutralise the alkaline batteries. Well, I'm just going to leave that soaking there for a little while. Okay, that should be long enough. And now I'm just going to clean that with some IPA. Isopropyl alcohol. Okay, I think we're ready to put it back together and see if it's now working. So you can see there, although it's a small product, it is still a well-made product and thought's gone into it the way the cables are clamped. It's just, uh, it's just quite a nice little thing. Get circlip back on. There we go. All right, let's pop the batteries in and see if it comes to life. Then we need to put the front back on. Yay, look at that. Fantastic. Oh, I haven't seen that display in ages. Nice and bright as well. Brilliant. Let's see if the little buzzer's still working. No, it's not. Oh, why is the buzzer not working? Ah, buzzer, why are you not working? Does it need more pressure? Well, that's annoying. Right, let's uh, have a little looky. Right, so this is the buzzer here. Oh. We've got a little black thing here. i seen a black thing a minute ago. What did I do with it? I think I threw it. I thought it was rubbish. Oh, no, it's on the floor here. Wow, do you know what this is? I thought this was just a little black post. It's not, it's a tight, I can't, I haven't got a multimeter to show you. That is basically a zebra connector or a lump of carbon or something. There should be continuity through this. And there's a little mold in here for it to go into. So the outer and inner one, you see. That's a little uh, piezo buzzer. And you see one will make contact with the inner bit and one will make contact with the outer bit. There. And they just go onto these pads here, these two pads. So I wonder now, is that going to work? No, but it's not actually... Uh, It's not coming up with that little symbol, the sound symbol. Hmm. 
I'm slightly confused here. I wonder if my leads have failed. Let me get a battery so I can measure DC voltage. No, so my leads are not working, are they? Right, I wonder where they've gone. Well, I soldered on there. It's amazing how lost you are without a multimeter. Right, how about if we were just a short? I can't really get to it though. Just thinking if the leads have failed, then if I was to short it on the board, then it should. Uh, it should recognise, it should recognise it, shouldn't it? Now there you go, look. Can you see now? It's got that symbol again. It's not making a noise. Oh, there, listen. It made it for a second. I heard it. I heard a tiny, tiny, tiny little noise. It's probably amplified more when it's uh, when you're not crushing it down. Okay, so there's something wrong with my leads. So we have to pop this out again. I'm going to bend this in a little bit here because that's the one that puts pressure on the board to make sure it pushes against these. Well, it definitely looks strong there. No, there you go, this, that's where it's gone. Can you see just there? Excellent, right, so, uh, oh, oh, they're both gone just there, isn't that amazing? So where it flexes through the, uh, through the, uh, the case, they're both gone there. Okay, so uh, let's just snip that back, there's nothing there, let's go a bit more. Yeah, we're on wire now. There we go. Nothing there, still nothing, now something. You guessed it, I haven't got any wire cutters or anything. But I have got a soldier iron. Now, let's put it back together. This time it should work. Look at that, I put a little A there for audio so I knew that was the one years ago to make the beeping sound. Oh, it's made in Japan. So obviously with these leads here, you wouldn't use it for AC anymore, but for uh, ohms, continuity, and low voltage DC, then uh, it's fine. Right, I'm gonna get a magic eraser, see if I can clean up this uh, kind of more uh, textured bit.
Well, 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 that came out much better than I thought. Look at the colour of it now. Oh, it looks lovely compared to what it did before. Shame I didn't change the leads over to new little probes down here. Then I could have called it a restoration video. Look at that. It looks really nice, doesn't it? So now, off, and it's off. DC, and it's DC. So if I go here and here, you will see minus 1.2. Um, plus 1.2 and there you go so happy days let's go to ohms and there you go a nice short and lastly the most important one I'm hoping you can hear that. There you go. So, do you know what? Yes, very simple, but I quite enjoyed that. I quite enjoyed seeing the inside of it, and it just shows you it's a quality product because it's a proper brand. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this little tea break repair, give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed your drink. Ah, and I will see you very soon. I'm going to use this now to try to fix a mixer.